A gross carious pulp exposure leading to a necrotic pulp and symptomatic apical periodontitis. Stick around, I'm gonna show you how I manage this one. I'm Bill Ludera and welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. This tooth number 30, the lower left six, presented with this gross carious pulpal exposure leading to a necrotic pulp and symptomatic apical periodontitis. We can see the radial lucency here on the periapical image, and the cone beam confirms the area of low density surrounding the apical area of tooth number 30. This is a large lesion. The interoral evaluation shows no signs of swelling or infection. And due to the location of the caries on the distal here, it's going to be really challenging to use a traditional single tooth isolation technique. So I chose to use a dual retainer split dam isolation technique with rubber dam blockout material. This allows me to access that distal caries without worrying about running into my rubber dam or having any issues with breaking my aseptic seal. The caries was excavated and the pulp exposure was clear. Now this is another one of those situations where the lesion was in very close proximity to those gingival tissues, which can cause some hemorrhaging. So I like to try to manage that very early on in the case so that it doesn't affect me throughout the course of my treatment. Using a little bit of ferric sulfate on the end of a micro brush, I can place it on the gingival tissues to easily control the field. Once the field is under control, I can now create my ideal access. The damage here to the distal will certainly affect my irrigation protocol, so I'm going to take the time and rebuild that wall with a pre-endodontic buildup. In some prior videos, you may have seen me use some material to block out these canals, maybe some warm thermoplastic gutta percha placed in the uh, pulp chamber proper. Uh, some Teflon tape has been suggested, which works really well too. Sometimes a sponge, sometimes a cotton pellet. Another technique I like to use though is the gutta percha projection technique. I'll first open the canal orifices to about a 2008, enough to accommodate a large gauge gutta percha cone. I'll then place a matrix band and etch the site. And then I'll take about size 3004 gutta percha points and apply it into the canal that I do not want material to flow into, in this case, the distal. Now, if you'd like, you can apply some of these cones to the mesial canals as well. But since the material itself will most likely not flow to that area, I'm not going to worry about placing any gutta percha cones there. I'm only interested in blocking out those distal canals. I'll apply some bonding and flow a dual cure bonded resin material freely in that distal box. Once cured, I can grab those gutta percha cones. And if I've got straight line access, they'll come right out. And if they don't, that's okay too. You can use those as a pilot to reaccess that canal if needed. I then go through my normal instrumentation and irrigation protocol without concern of that area towards the distal. The canals are dried and I obturated using a single cone obturation technique. This is the cone fit radiograph which confirms the proper placement of my obturation material. I was happy with it so I went ahead and I completed the case. The cones are seared off at the level of the orifice and the treatment is completed. A bonded orifice barrier was placed over the top of the canals in order to protect my work, and then I close the case with a sponge and cavity. Here's my final PA, and I'm really happy with the conservative result of the canal shapes that I was able to achieve here. Now, I have this patient coming back in about six months for some imaging, and we'll see if this was enough to get this apical area under control. So stick around and stay tuned. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video today, and I hope you subscribe to my channel and stay up to date with all my new videos. I'm Bill Nudera. Thanks for watching.